Welcome back to the Friday vlog series. Where today, firstly, you might be wondering, what am I doing on a seeker exceed, given the subject matter of this video? We'll get to that. First of all, I need to clear the air because given the title of this video, I know what some of you are going to be thinking. Oh, how much is BMC paying you, mate? But the fact is, I can't do much these days without... Just give us a sec. Oh, he's in bed with water now. Subtle promo for oxygen. But the fact is, I paid for my BMC team machine SLR01 out of my own money. Yes, I did get a little bit of a discount because I harassed the local Aussie distributor. Video up there if you want to check it out. And if anything, I don't know if bitter is the right word, but I definitely don't have a very good emotion towards the brand BMC, which I'll explain in this video too. And number two, I know some of you will be leaning into your phone or across your keyboards right now saying, Don't get me started on that carbon fiber crap. So let me be clear up front, I have not ridden all the bikes. I'll put some info in the video description area if you want to see how many bikes I've test ridden and reviewed. And I am not the king, queen, or whatever you want to say of bike reviews. I'm just a regular bloke that unfortunately doesn't have the right body shape for cycling, but I happen to really like cycling and enjoy making videos and in this piece today i'm just answering a question that hits my inbox at least a handful of times every single week and that is cam what is your favorite bike you've ever ridden and it is my 2021 bmc team machine slr013 with upgraded bars to bmc's ics system and upgraded wheels to these caden decadence 45 millimeter carbon rims and the frame set is the exact same frame set as the new 2023 BMCs. So you might be wondering, what am I doing out here in the bush versus sitting in my little dungeon at home reviewing this bike? Well, I feel like there's enough reviews already online on this bike and I'm not beholden to anyone. So let's do things a little bit differently in today's video. Let's do some speed tests. The BMC Team Machine 3 stock versus the BMC Team Machine 3 upgraded versus the Seeker Exceed RDC with the same wheels. And let me be clear, I have done the speed test this morning, but I have no idea of the results. So this video could backfire if the Seeker Exceed towers up the BMC T machine. Additionally, let's talk about what I did not like about the BMC T machine three. Then how I feel the BMC has nailed this frame set, finishing off with my rating system. So let's start off with what I initially, when I first got my hands on this bike, Bike, did not like about it. Number one, it came with a terrible alloy handlebar. Right. I reckon. What do you think of those bars that come stock on the SLR03? Oh, absolutely delightful. Which I emphasized up front in my first impressions. Ten and a half thousand dollars AUD. And that's a lot of money. So to have to dip out on the ICS, the integrated cockpit system, in exchange for what feels like a cheap alloy handlebar with a stem that feels a little bit flexy. Let's just say I'm a little bit disappointed. It had some mediocre mass produced DT Swiss spline 35 millimeter carbon wheels. And I hate to say this because I really do like the guys and girls at SRAM, but a disappointing SRAM force access 12 speed experience. What's disappointing? Well, first up the rear cassette. I don't know if you can actually hear that, but it's been described as having a chattery noise to it and I believe SRAM have since resolved the issue but it's left a whole bunch of I guess we're Gen 1 SRAM 4 12 speed users with a noisy rear cassette which is kind of disappointing number two and this could be user error but I don't think it has been all the time I've had a lot of chain drops which has left my bottom bracket area completely hacked to pieces ultimately these chain drops have left me lacking confidence to take this bike or group set i should say into an event or race where i would need to use the front derailleur which is a real shame lastly the the rear derailleur kind of had a mind of its own until recently i took it in to see my friends at trilogy cycles see that when i did that hmm? that one yeah. 
SRAM agreed that it did have a mind of its own and replaced the rear derailleur at no charge. But overall, my experiences with this group set haven't been that great. But I have resolved the front end, well, not myself, but thanks to Jay Taylor at Taylor Cycles and swapped out the wheels for these decadence 45 millimeter carbon wheels. And I feel will act as a good substitute rim profile for some of the speed tests and comparisons we're doing today. But if you look online at the current BMC team machine SLR013, it does appear that BMC have resolved all these three issues. Which now takes us to the centerpiece of this piece today being the BMC team machine SLR01 frame set. First up, let me give you a quick history of my personal experiences with the BMC team machine. It was 2011. He has absolutely slaughtered his opposition in just 42 and a half kilometers. Aussie Cadell Evans won the Tour de France on the BMC team machine. And that sparked my fascination with the BMC team machine, leading to selling my limited edition Tom Boone and Venge in 2013 to fund my first ever BMC team machine from Andy at Chaos Custom Bikes in Melbourne, Victoria. I absolutely love that bike and the only reason why I sold it was because I joined a cycling team in 2014 and we were all on specialized tarmacs. But the BMC team machine, my friends, stuck with me to a point where in 2019, I walked into my now local bike shop, Trilogy Cycles, and purchased another BMC team machine again with my own money. Subsequently to that, I have created a ton of BMC content on the channel, including getting my hands on the time machine. And guess what? And this is where the slight bitterness comes into play. Despite creating six pieces of independent content over the past two to three years, specifically on BMC bikes, totaling over 550,000 views combined. Thanks to your support, I have never heard anything from BMC head offices. No hello, no thank you, no email, nothing. I should point out that technically, a BMC engineer did reach out to me, albeit independently over Instagram after he watched a video where my wife said this about the time machine. Uh, it looks really good. So it's kind of like, I've had a few people message me on Instagram and say they reckon it looks like a Ferrari and I'm pretty sure that... Why do you think it looks like a Ferrari? I don't actually like Ferraris. I like okay. this bike better, to okay. be honest. <laughs> Ferrari can be a bit of a wanker car. Yeah. This doesn't look like a wanker bike. No. And if I compare that to specialized bikes, and I did a fair amount of work on specialized bikes when I first got this channel up and running, I got overwhelmed with emails and thank yous and even a few gifts thrown to me. So if I compare my experiences with specialized bikes to BMC bikes, you can see potentially where I'm coming from. And the only reason why I bring you into my little world here is twofold. Number one, if BMC were paying me for this or sponsoring this video, do you think I would be saying that? Oh, it's all set up, it's a conspiracy. And number two, as a result of that history, I've had a fair amount of experience with the BMC team machine. And to me, it was almost the ultimate all round race machine, but it fell down on two factors. Factor number one, the side effect from being an incredibly comfortable ride was at times an overly soft sensation in the rear of the BMC, often making you feel like you had a flat tire, even when you didn't. And factor number two, while the BMC was stiff, it handled really well, it climbed like a mountain goat, and of course it was incredibly comfortable because that is what BMCs are known for. I always felt like it just dipped out on speed. Anecdotally, it just felt as though it didn't have the same aerodynamic credentials as its all-round competitors. However, in my humble opinion, those two issues have now been resolved. But Resolving those issues isn't the impressive part. What is impressive here is that BMC have maintained the Team Machine SLR01's incredible comfort. It's essentially a stiff, fast, aggressive armchair, and that just doesn't make sense. If we narrow in on the frame set versus the previous model, the geometry and overall design basically stays the same, but the addition of cam tail inspired tube shapes, notably a narrower fork and a down tube that clearly has some unusual contours in it for an intended outcome. 
i.e. speed, plus the integrated bottle cages, which seems to have been stolen from its time machine companion, all just works super well. In fact, there were some stats going around when BMC first launched this bike. These stats, I believe, were on the BMC website, but they removed them due to criticism, and those stats were, through their own testing, that the BMC team machine was 20% stiffer, 9% lighter, and 6% more aero than its predecessor. And if anything, from my own personal riding experience, I would flip stiffness and aero and add comfort in as staying the same. Yes, you still get some of that soft sensation in the rear of the bike, but it's not to the same extent as it once was. And I don't think you wanna lose that completely. Otherwise, this bike potentially doesn't maintain its mantle as one of the most comfortable all-round race bikes on the market. So, despite not feeling any love from BMC about my BMC content to the BMC engineers that have put this bike together. I've got to say, you've done a bloody magnificent job. So the speed tests. What we have here are speed tests on four segments. A closed road climb, which goes for one and a half kilometers that isn't overly steep where I try and average 350 watts. A false flat decline for 1.8 kilometers where I try and average 400 watts, a false flat incline where I try and average 300 watts, and a descent where I am pedaling at 300 watts from the previous segment until I hit a signpost and then I don't pedal at all. With these speed tests for consistency, I use the same Asioma power pedals. And of course, recalibrate from one bike to the next, including changing the specified crank length if required. I try and pick a very low wind day, as you can see from this day, taking screenshots from my wind app before each run, there was no wind on this specific day. For the upgraded BMC versus the Seeker, I use the same wheel tire combination and rear tires. They are the Vittoria Corsa Control Graphene 2.0 28mm width. I have roughly half a bottle of water, which I don't sip. I have another bottle in my car. Hands are on hoods, elbows slightly bent, head down a little bit, and re-bike weight. The BMC Team Machine 3 stock came in at just over 7.6 kilograms without pedals. Upgraded, it comes in at 300 grams lighter and with the same wheel tire combo, but with SRAM Force Access 1 by on the Seeker, 7.2 kilograms, all medium frame sets. And regarding my body weight, I'm 79 kilos, I believe that's 174 pounds. And if we compare my weight now to what it was in September last year, when I did the initial runs on the non-upgraded BMC, my weight would have been pretty much the same. If anything, I might've been a little bit lighter, but I'm talking less than a kilogram. So let me say up front before we look at the data, these speed tests aren't perfect, I get that. And I'm not looking, or I don't think we should look at segments individually and analyze them with a lot of scrutiny. What I'm more so looking for is an overall theme. Is there anything that we're looking at here that is telling us one thing or another? But what I can categorically say is, these tests take me a lot of time, so if you get value out of these speed tests or even this video, if you could give the video a like, it helps the channel out, I would greatly appreciate it. So, if we look at this spreadsheet, and I'll provide a link to this document below where you can see each segment if you click on the links and even go back in time and look at other road bikes I've tested on the same segments, you can see the upgraded BMC did not perform on the hill climb like I expected. The upgraded BMC and the Seeker took charge in the 400 watt segment TT like you mean it. And I'm scratching my head a little bit at segment three as I initially thought some light wind gusts might be coming into play for the BMC 3 stock run I did in September last year. I'll leave that one up to you to decide. And with the descent, really not much between any of them. So I'm sure everyone's gonna read into this a little bit differently, but for me, it appears the Seeker wins the battle over the BMC team machine when it comes to speed, but is this data going to convince me to take the Seeker over the BMC? Maybe to a crit race, but to everything else, it's gonna be the BMC team machine over any bike, all the way, for the time being, anyway. I'll catch you in the next.